Okay, the purpose of today's tutorial is to show you how to use the Microsoft Word Mail Merge Wizard. I'm currently on the Home tab of my ribbon. Also should mention here that I do already have a document open and my intention here is to take a list of recipients, names and addresses that I have already stored in a Microsoft Excel worksheet within a workbook uh, and connect that to this letter so that I can send the same letter out to multiple people. So looking across the tabs on the ribbon, I'm going to go over to the Mailings tab. And one of the interesting things that they've done in 2007 and 2010 Microsoft Word is they've taken a lot of the individual mail merge tools and placed them out into the various groups of the mailings tab of the ribbon. So I, I chose to show uh, the mail merge wizard in this particular tutorial because I think it's a good starting point for those of you who are brand new to mail merge. But do note that a lot of the steps that we take within that wizard can be done individually throughout various areas of the mailings tab uh, within the ribbon. But I'm going to go to the group here called Start Mail Merge and I'm actually going to click on a button called Start Mail Merge and at the very bottom I'm going to tell Microsoft Word that I would like to conduct a step-by-step -step mail merge wizard. This is going to bring up a side panel for the mail merge steps off to the right hand side of my screen. The very first decision that you'll need to make is what type of mail merge document are you putting together? Are you generating envelopes uh, for a mass mailing, labels? Are you putting together the initial letter? In my particular demo today, I'm just going to put together some letters. So that's already defined in step number one. So I'm going to come down to the bottom, click on the link to take me to step number two. Now, I had opened the document prior to starting the Mail Merge Wizard, so basically what I need to tell Microsoft Word is I want to use the current document. Had I not yet opened the document, if I were basing it off of a template or a document that I had typed in the past, I do have these other two choices to have the opportunity to go out and grab the template or get the file that I wanted to use. I've already got mine in place, so I'm going to come down to step number three, which is selecting the recipients. Now. Microsoft Excel seems to be a very popular choice for people to maintain contact information, name and address information for mailing lists and so forth. Uh, it is a very flexible, columnar, delimited type of environment. Uh, it's very easy to sort. So it would be my recommendation that if you're thinking about, you know, how should I keep names and addresses, I don't really want to go into building a database, uh, a spreadsheet or a worksheet be a real simple solution for you. And it connects well to the mail merge interface of Microsoft Word. So what I'm telling it in this step is that I already have an existing list. You could also pull your contacts from Microsoft Outlook or if you didn't have a list of names and addresses at all, you could kind of on the fly stop here in step number three and type up a new list of names and addresses, although that gets a little time consuming. So in this example I'm going to use an existing Microsoft Excel list and what I'm going to need to do here is browse out on my file system and capture that list. So bear with me here, I'm going to click on browse. The initial default look in location is going to be my data sources for most of you. Uh, basically all that you need to do is navigate your uh, system structure, get yourself um, to the area where you do have your list, and I'm trying to do that rather quickly here. Um, aha, there it is. So I'm going out and grabbing this Microsoft Excel file. Now this particular Excel workbook only had one worksheet and the name of that worksheet was employees and if I would have had multiple sheets in the workbook during this step of the mail merge process I would have had to have indicated to Microsoft Word which sheet of the workbook I wanted to pull the names and addresses from. So mine's pretty simple, just one sheet called employees. It's already pre-selected. I'm going to click OK. Now this mail merge recipients dialog box pops up, gives me the information from that worksheet within that workbook and you know there are a lot of cool things that you can do at this step. I'm, I'm going to kind of keep it short here though uh, but I do want to let you know that you can certainly sort by any one of the fields that's being let in from Microsoft Excel here. You could filter for instance if you were only looking for a list of the customers from maybe one state or two states. You can eliminate duplicates and so on. So there's a lot of good stuff that you can do at this point just within this dialog box. But for now I'm going to let it go. I want to send my letter to all of these people so I'm just going to click OK and Microsoft Word makes that connection to that worksheet. So I'm ready to move on to the next step, step number four, which is to write your letter. Now Microsoft does have a lot of modular pieces, or in other words, pre-built 
fields of information that are pretty popular for usage in typical mail merge. Um, so they already have pre-made address blocks, greeting lines, and so on. What I'm going to do in this tutorial is show you how to drop in individual fields because I know that a lot of you maybe have some non-traditional information that you keep within a list of information about a person, place, or thing. So sometimes address blocks, greeting lines, they're just not going to do exactly what you need them to do. So starting in this version and also available in 2010, within this button breakdown within the groups with the mailings tab with the ribbon, you will see a button now, a split function button called insert merge field. And when I click on that, what it does is it pulls all the individual field names coming from that Microsoft Excel worksheet data. So what I'm going to do is just build this one field at a time um, so that you're aware of how to do that. Now certainly if an address block or a greeting line uh, would be perfect fit for your scenario, then by all means use it. Uh, but again, I just wanted to take this time to kind of show you how to drop in these individual fields so that you can build it on your own. So I'm going to drop in the first name field. It looks a bit obscure at first, but this is the field code. In the next step, we'll actually see the preview data merge together. Uh, I'm going to put in my space bar, hit there, drop in the last name. I'm going to press enter to get to the next line. I'm going to insert the company name. Then I'm going to drop in the address, then the city, comma space, state, space, zip code. Now I do have a couple of extra blank paragraphs here. I'm going to just delete those out. There we go. And at this point, you could, you know, select these fields, come back over to the Home tab, apply any formatting. If you wanted to, uh, you know, go back to the normal style with no space, things like that, uh, you can certainly format the selected form fields as you would normal text uh, within Microsoft Word. So just wanted to let you know, you can tab switch back to Home, back to any other tab to apply any formatting that you need to. I'm going to come back over to the Mailings tab. Now after the word Dear, I'm going to hit my space bar, and I'm going to make this letter fairly informal. I'm just going to drop in their first name. There we go. Now that's pretty much it as far as the fields that I want to place into uh, this letter. So what I'm going to do now is take a peek at them, see what they look like. I'm going to move on to step number five, which is to preview my letters and I can see the first letter coming up. I'm not real happy about this uh, extra paragraph space I have right there between their name. I'm going to let it go though. Uh, you can see up here in the ribbon also the preview results. So I could navigate between the previews by using the navigation tools here in the preview results group of the ribbon or I could stay over here in the mail merge wizard. Either way everything's looking pretty good. So what I'm going to do is move on to step number f six, which is to complete the merge. Now, uh, this causes a lot of people to become very confused, this last step, and I think it has to do a little bit with the, the wording. Um, I had a total of six different letters, I do believe it was, for the six people that were in my data source. And if I wanted to ship them directly to the printer, um, I do have this option over here to complete the merge, which is uh, a print option which would ask me, you know, do you want to send all of the letters at one time, just the current letter that you're sitting on, uh, maybe you had a thousand letters and today you just want to send letter 1 to 100 to the printer, you know, you do have that option. But if you just like to complete the merge and save the final result set as a separate Microsoft Word document because understand what you're looking at now is kind of like a document in limbo. You've got, you know, your data source currently previewed together with the form letter, but you haven't made that final step yet to kind of merge them together into one final piece. So when you want to do that, you want to choose Edit Individual Letters. And what I'm going to tell Microsoft Word to do here is to take all of the letters and merge them to a final document. So I'm going to click OK. New document has been created and I have six separate pages, six separate letters for each of the people, all broken down incidentally into separate section breaks. So do be aware of that. If you go to print, 
uh, just one letter at a time, you're going to want to make sure that within your print dialog box, you are in fact telling Microsoft Word, you know, look, I'd just like to print, you know, section three, page one, so that it would then know to print page three um, of this particular example document. So that's it, just a simple six step wizard to get you through that process. I'm going to kind of jump back over here to the uh, in limbo document just to let you know that during the course of being in the mail merge um, just some things that we saw within the mail merge wizard uh, the modular fields like address block greeting line those were also available up here in the write and insert field group of the ribbon uh, we also had the ability to select the recipients list via the ribbon obviously previewing we talked a little bit about that during the course of uh, working through step number five of the wizard and then step six which is to uh, finish the merge also located up here on the ribbon so I think what you're gonna find is over time once you get the hang of the six step process of a mail merge you'll probably wean yourself away from the wizard and just start using the individual selections that are available within the mailings tab of your Microsoft Word ribbon hope you found this helpful and uh, happy mail merging